There's a devil in the bottle Staring straight at me Daring me to reach out But I know he's testing me If I take just one sip I become that devil son Welcome to part two of Making a Mead. My name's Zippy and welcome to the channel. So let's talk about ingredients. First thing you need is three pound of honey. And the jars I get as Tesco Clear Honey, this is the cheap. The whole point of this is to do it on the cheap. Uh, Tesco's Clear Honey, it's blended honey, it's pasteurised, you don't need to do anything else. Um, don't get the everyday honey if you go to Tesco's. There is some debate of what if they put inverted sugars in as well. But Aldi's, £1.50 a jar, Lidl's, £1.50 a jar, both those honeys are good. I've tried them both to make a mead or to make a melamel test batch because um, I like to save my best honey for the, uh, for the bigger amounts, obviously. Um, that's the first ingredient. Spring water is the next ingredient. Don't use tap water. Um, I live in a chalky area. They also put fluoride in, so after the weekend, if you open a tap with a cold water tap, you can smell the chlorine and the fluoride. You get that smell. Use spring water. It's more neutral. If you don't want the pH to go drop too down, honey's quite acidic. Um, so, you've bought five gallon, uh, five litres of uh, spring water in the container. You can use that. Uh, so that's the next thing. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is yeast. Now you can use bread yeast, I've used it before, Allison's bread yeast, strong yeast. Tops out about 11% alcohol, 12 if you want to push it. Uh, we have Young's dry active yeast, that's uh, another type of yeast. Or you can go for a specialised yeast. Now if you're doing a strong must, where it's just 4 plus pound of honey, you don't want to do it all at once because you'll overwhelm the yeast. If you're doing a strong one, you can use a champagne yeast. Um, I'm using uh, the most common one for meads. For medium, medium sweet mead is, or even slightly dry, medium dry, without being too dry, is Lavin D47 is recommended. Um, Americans seem to get that one and use that one a lot. But I've read on the forums, and I'm actually going to try this for the first time, so I'm going to use Lavin 71B. This doesn't ferment out so much. So it leaves quite a bit of residual sweetness. So you don't need so much honey to get a sweet mead. It won't be as strong. Um, I think it tops out about between 13 and 14%, but leaves a lot of sweetness. So that's your yeasts. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is yeast nutrients, because honey's not got no amino nitrates, so the yeast can't feed on. So you need some yeast nutrients. Now I use a combined one, Tomo's oil meal, Tonozymon. Um, it's a combined one. It's made by Richie's cut the quid from a brewing shop. In the old days, we would throw in a handful of raisins, or a packet of raisins, and a spoonful of marmite, because the energizer is basically B12 and B6. So, a spoonful of marmite and raisins. Um, during this series, I'm actually going to make a, an old fashioned mead using bread yeast, raisins, and marmite. Uh, and at the end of the series, I'll bottle them up. I'm going to send a few bottles out for comparisons. I'll send a couple of bottles out, one of each. So, but that's later in the series. And I'll talk about more about the yeasts later in the series. So that's our ingredients. Now, first of all, we're going to go and sanitise our equipment. And I actually turn around and uh, I usually use VWP, uh, Brew Clean. Uh, but this one's a no rinse sanitizer from the range. It's a pound thing, a pound a packet, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, I've used this actually for um, sanitising bottles with bottle rinser. So I'm going to use that. Read the instructions. Um, remember, you're only working with a gallon, so you're not working with a big bucket. Uh, I think VWP is a teaspoon a gallon. Fill it up, but don't pour it away. Put it in the bowl because you're going to need to sanitise all your other equipment as you go. So let's go on with the sanitisation and we'll go inside and make the mead. Um, if your demi john has been stood for a while, this one's been stood for a couple of weeks, I'm going to turn around and rinse it with hot water first, then add the steriliser and shake it. So I'm going to get the sterilising done 
and then I'll get back to you when we get on with the mead. Right, there's the honey standing in hot water. Uh, this just makes it a little bit more fluid, easier to pour. Um, I'm not going to heat it up. I'm not going to heat it up at all on the stove. This is a basic hard uh, mead. Um, and any honey you buy, like this is Tesco's clear, but if you went and bought to Aldi or Lidl's, just £1.50 a jar, you're talking £4.50. You can buy one jar of honey at £7 that's not even a pound, it's three quarters of a pound in weight. Leonard honey's pasteurised before you get it, there's no need to pasteurise it. And I've seen some more stupid temperatures that people put up on the forums, there's no need to pasteurise it that hot. A slow 20 minute bay marine warming of wild honey at that 55 to 60 degrees is in the sea is enough to pasteurise honey. And I've seen temperatures going up to 70, 75. You'll kill the flavour, you'll kill the aroma, and you'll ruin a mead. So, but pasteurised jar honey, this is Tesco's clear. Um, it's £1.60 a jar. It's perfectly right, just throw it in cold. What we call the cold method, I mean. Uh, quick one on that. Um, don't get the Tesco's everyday honey. I know it's 99p, but it's not pure honey. Um, there is a bit of debate whether they add some uh, inverted sugars into it. So, but the clear honey, if you go to Tesco's, the clear honey, that's, that's pure honey. I've never had a problem with that one. Um, but the reason I've used that rather than my honey store is because this whole exercise is to do it basic for a beginner who's got no equipment and to get them to how to make a mead. So, don't get the 99p everyday honey. It's not good. Um, I've done an experiment with it and I've been told about it and it, it's not got the quality it doesn't produce a good mead so uh, and if you're in America or in Canada especially America your variety honey the price of your honey is so much better and cheaper over here um, we pay a fortune for our honey it's why I get friendly with a beekeeper uh, I renovate hives in the winter so I get payment the next season and I get the first blossom honeys and I also get the in the season honey and I also get some off the cappings it's, it's a cheap way so if you get friendly with a beekeeper ask him for the cappings you have to warm them up melt the wax let it cool take the wax off pull the honey out and that's it and then pasteurize it but um, I'll do a whole program on honey I'll do whole programs on all the ingredients that you've seen today more depth and a uh, bit more knowledge there but today is going to make basic mead Okay, I've put my yeast in a starter. Uh, it says 50 millilitres water, I've got 75. Um, and it says dissolve it. I always put half a teaspoon of sugar, and it helps it um, to start. Because when you add it to honey, it's quite a thick and rich, sugar rich um, environment for the yeast. You don't want to shock it, so you want to give it a little sweetness there. Ideally, if I was making a must where I'd warm the honey, I'd put a little bit of the warm honey into that but um, that's fine bit of just a half a teaspoon of sugar 75 millilitres give it a whisk let it stand for 20 minutes and then you're going to whisk it up when you pitch it when the temperature's right okay I've uh, put the yeast nutrient in uh, which is my dry ingredient and then I've using the funnel put it in there and then pour in some water that washes the rest of the nutrient down and then we're going to shake that so Take that, put that on the cloth, put the cap back on, tight, give it a shake. So the yeast nutrients now in there in the water. Now I'm going to go and get the honey, and we're going to pour the honey, hopefully it's nice and runny because it's warm, through the funnel. And you want some hot water, so you want to boil the kettle, you're only going to use a little bit of water just to rinse out the jars. So I'm going to get the honey open and then pour it in there and then I'll show you how we rinse the jars out. Right, the honey's been stood warming up so it's nice, it's even runny, it's more fluid. Um, and the reason I don't put the cat, put it straight in, I always crack it first and I'd leave it there because these are hot. They've been stood in hot water and so are these and you don't want to be struggling trying to open a lid. So lid off and then you can see, come out a bit, that, let's pour that in see how runny that is it's flowing 
and it's flowing straight into the fermenter. It sits at the bottom, but let's not worry, we're going to shake it all up. But it just means you get more of the honey in the first hit with your pour than you ain't got so much to rinse out. Which means you don't need to add so much hot water. Therefore, increasing the temperature of the must and then having to wait for it to cool down enough to pitch. So that's one. One's in there already. Let's just get the other one. There. All that honey is flowing in nicely. Now, I hold it for a good 10 15 seconds, let the, most of it go. Then I'll wrap it up and then I'll put some hot water in, rinse the jars. And we'll put that in as well. Okay, you can see I've just put that much hot water in, just a touch. We've got honey on the lid as well. All that is going to go in. You don't want to waste any of it. You're paying enough for it now. So we oops, just seal this up properly. Yeah, that one's done better. Yeah. Just give it a swell, give it a shake. Dissolve all that honey. That as well. They are pretty hot. And then that's going to get poured in there. And we'll do that now. And then I'm going to shake the fermenter. And then I'll come back to you. And hence why I said about the solid lid. So if you get two bottles, you can make one into the fermenter to start with. Keep the solid lid. And then you can shake it. And shake it for a good 5-10 minutes. And what you'll get. Is a coloured must. All that honey are dissolved, and that's what you want. So I'm going to shake this violently off camera. And also, you're oxygenating the wort of the must. I keep saying wort, that's beer. You're oxygenating this must. You're getting the oxygen level up inside the liquid, so the yeast can start to breed and f before it starts to ferment. Okay, I've now topped up the uh, fermenter to the corner before it starts to slope. The reason that is, by the time I pitch the yeast, it's going to come up a little bit more, but that's going to give the biggest surface uh, The bubbles obviously trap air, and uh, also the contact with the air in, in the space once you've put the seal in, all that air, all the oxygen in that air, gets used by the yeast. So you want this biggest surface, so you've got more contact and more gas exchange, and that helps the yeast multiply quickly, and therefore a lot more yeast bodies, or me cells, so they call it. A lot more yeast, quicker fermentation, a better fermentation. So we're just gonna take a hydrometer reading for that. So I'm gonna pour some of this into a glass. My hydro jar broke the other night. So I'm gonna pour this into a glass, take a reading, and then I'll get back to you with a reading. Just uh, take the plate glass and put it in. And it came up 1070, so you should be around the 1070 mark. Now you might think that's low for a mead, um, but remember when we top up this headspace we're going to add more honey. So that honey will take it up a bit. Um, so 10.070 is a bit low. I could add extra honey and not so much water, but I'm doing this on the cheap. Simple mead. So three jars of honey is good. Um, and when we top this up I'll probably use another half jar, three quarters jar, and that will take it up another... another uh, good 16 17 points at least so you'll be around the 10 90 mark the yeast i'm using is not a, a strong fermenting yeast. It's, it's not as aggressive as champagne yeast it won't be completely dry so all i've got to do now is pitch the yeast um, and then i've sanitized the top and the the airlock is now sanitized so that will turn around and go on uh, once i've pitched the yeast this will probably be about another 10 minutes and let the can see the yeast it's really developing really fluffing up um, so whisk that or break it down with a fork and then you pitch that and then what will you do put the solid lid on again shake it like hell for a good three four minutes just keep shaking it let it settle put the airlock on and then you should be away and within a couple of hours that should be starting to bubble so once I've pitched the yeast and shook it up to aerate the uh, must and I put the airlock on, I'll get back to you. Okay, I pitched the yeast set just before five o'clock. Uh, and the time is now half past six. So an hour and a half later, it's just starting to bubble. 
So if you make yeast start, it will activate it quicker. So mine's started bubbling in an hour and a half. Uh, hopefully, go on. Maybe not. Never worked with airlocks. There it goes, one bubble. So it's just started to bubble. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to shake this up again. There is a good where you take the airlock off, let the air back in, and stay out again. For the first three days, you can you want to oxygenate. Um, a lot of people don't. I don't normally bother. I'm going to try it. And I've read up about it, and apparently, it can help the yeast. So we'll do it tomorrow. That's a 24 hours period. And I'll uncap it and I'll put the solid cap in, shake it up again. Um, hopefully that will help it. Don't have to. Um, like I said, it's the first time I normally do it. I don't normally do it with a five gallon or a ten because picking them up is heavy enough. Um, but oxygen, uh, aer aerating it again with a stone, um, with the big meads batches, uh, you're talking 54 litres. That might be a way of to help the yeast not be overwhelmed. But yeah hour and a half and I'm starting to bubble so you should be bubbling within a couple of hours if you make the start if you try just put yeast in dry and shake it you've got a bit of lag time probably about four to six hours so if you make it in the evening by the morning it'll be bubbling a good one